Hello gentle viewers, this is Av Guardian welcoming you back to Out of the Park Baseball 23. We did make the playoffs, but were summarily swept by the Miami Seals, mostly thanks to a an uninspiring rotation. I think it's maybe the kindest way to put it. Uh, we definitely have a long way to go before we can truly reach the dizzying heights of Pirates teams past. But we have a very important asset. A whole shit ton of money. Um, there will be a lot of rotation turnover because a lot of people just aren't going to get signed. But if we spend intelligently, I think this could turn into another World Series team very, very quickly. Um... Again, key word though, intelligently. And we do have some holes to fill. Um, Jesus Acuna turned out to be an excellent second baseman. I think we can stick with him for a while. Um, Clint Daly is getting on in years, but that's fine. I think center field remains our biggest gap. It's the one area that we're really struggling in because the rest of the line is looking pretty solid. We've got Hill, Pozo, Salgado, Cerulli, an excellent uh, combo of Barnhart and Kanagiani. Although, I will note, Barnhart hit almost 300 and doesn't have that kind of raw contact, so we probably would expect him to take a bit of a dip back. Um, so that's something to bear in mind as we enter the next season. What we need is we need pitching. And we need a lot of it. <clears throat> Ideally, at a bare minimum, I would like one or two top-tier starting pitchers. Like we're talking 65 and above. And... I'm thinking anywhere from two to three relievers. This is going to be a pitching-centric a pitching -centric off season, I believe. Um just to see what we can acquire. Um, I also wouldn't object terribly if we could get um, potentially a new shortstop. Like, I'm not saying I definitely want to do that, but I think catcher is the other place. If we could get a top flight catcher that would also put us in great shape to be one of the best teams in the majors uh, going forward. This is a, an off-season fraught with potential, and if we can turn any of that potential into reality, I think we'll be pretty good. I truly think we'll be pretty good. So, my friends, uh, anything else I wanted to talk about? Oh, somebody pointed out I got the wrong package for Joe West. Let me real quick check my transaction log and see if that is something I did do. Because that'd feel pretty silly if I did. Uh, what was I looking for? Transaction log. Nope, I did not want complete. I wanted major. Let's see here. So I got Blanco, Barba, and Trejo for him. Yeah, I think you might be right. I don't think this is the package I necessarily wanted. Um, like, nobody here is terrible, and Blanco, at least, is an elite power guy, but we already know that my park doesn't really do that all that well uh, or does it yeah our park does suppress home runs quite bad that's why right-handed batters so oh well that is what happens when you're a giant potato and you make potato-ish decisions uh let's keep going um and that may be even more of a reason to try to invest in at least one more top flight bat 
But to be honest, like, nobody here is playing completely insane. And I would argue Sean Hill is not playing at his very best. With this level of contact, Sean Hill should be regularly hitting into the 290-300 range. Uh, so that means there's still more to be had here. But I do want a top flight leadoff guy. If I can find a great defensive center fielder who can also lead off, I think that would be the perfect accompaniment to this roster. The other possibility, of course, is letting Acuna lead off. But I don't know that I'd trust him there. I'm especially concerned about his lack of discipline. 11 walks in 100 games is not enough walks. 21 and 144 is definitely not enough walks. He needs to be walking much more frequently than that because as he ages, his contact will get worse. And when he starts losing contact, he becomes a liability offensively. Uh, speaking of going forward, um, I haven't officially decided yet. 2060 is still quite a ways away, and maybe by then I'll have a strong opinion one way or the other. But I'm really curious to see, to see how some of these players do over time. I'm really curious about that. So we might go past 2060. I'm not committing to anything yet with the Pirates. Um, because while on the one, I really do want to see how OTV incorporated any changes to CBA this season, like the, the draft lottery and a couple of other things. On the other hand... I don't know if I would play with the parts until 24 comes out. I think we will at some stage do 23 with probably the Guardians. Um, but we will see what happens. Uh, we'll see what happens. But I'm definitely having still a pretty good time. And I'd like to see if we can get even better. So without any further ado, we shall sim forward. I am always in the driver's seat. That's not true. Sometimes that water drops, but... Hey, Chris Rios, get fucked. Um, you're not that good, so if you want someone else to give you a major league contract, go for it. You're a 13th round pick, my dude. I have no loyalty to you whatsoever. TJ Hopkins, I'd like you. I'm gonna offer you 300 grand. I will happily pour even more money into you. Hopkins knows giving you 300 grand. I'll give you 350, but if you tell me to get fucked at that point, then I will simply be enraged with you. Um, also, we should probably be investing more money in our scouting and development budgets. Like, I'm not going to spend 104 million in free agents, but I'm going to wait until after the season to make that decision. Or not after the season, but uh, after the off season, after we get whoever we actually want. So we got Padilla. Yeah, Hopkins get fucked. Uh, I'm not here to just feed your ego. Not when I could grab the much younger Nick Savaridi. I'm gonna offer you 250 out of the gate. Like, I want really good coaches deep in my pool here. Um, so that when I need to make promotions, I can make them from within. Okay, waiting on contracts to be assessed. And they all agreed, excellent. So all my coaching positions I believe are now full. And right now they're unhappy, but I think it's gonna get better really soon. Really Ronnie Gideon, you're normal but you hate normal. What the fuck ever dude, I don't even care. Um, we're just going to keep going with this 
Rosser, but I do want to see if Mr. Gideon could be an improvement at any of these positions here. Yes, Gideon is legendary teaching catchers. I will use Degagne for infield. No, I'll use Degagne for outfield. I'd rather have the legendary guy do first base and catcher, because I think, or infield and catcher, because I think those are where we have a bit more talent. Oh, no, actually, no, we will swap it. Because I've got younger players in the outfield than I do in the infield. The infield is more or less older players. Uh, so we're going to do that. Let's, let's see if we get any awards. Any gold gloves? Nope. I think we're going to get at least the silver slugger. But beyond that, I'm not sure. Want me to take Jalen Smith? Jalen Smith is not good enough, to be honest with you, so no, I'm not interested. He might be someday, but anyone who's going to walk as many people as he does strikes me as a bad risk. He strikes me as a bad player to pursue. I got some silver sluggers. Well, maybe just the one. Yeah, Henry Salgado won it. I mean, yeah, Dave Hayden might have hit 53 homers, but Johnny Cerulli was the better player, I'd argue. Oh, maybe he actually is better. I don't know. All right. So it's free agency time. And this, I think, is going to be a critical free agency period. We're going to have a lot of money to spend. And if we can get the right players, I think we can just launch this team into the stratosphere. We'll have a good mix of really good young talent and some top quality free agents could just leap us into orbit. I'm noticing the freight market is very old already, uh, which is not ideal. We're going to see who we could acquire here. Oh, I see what happened there. That's pretty funny, actually. All players. So. This is not a great free agent market. No. Now. Sergio Lara would be a very, very good choice for a lot of reasons. He's a top-flight center fielder. He gets on base at a really high level. And he's even a pretty good base dealer. The only downside to signing him that I can think of is the fact he does have an injury where proneness of wrecked. I get that. And in addition is the fact he's already 39 years old. I like a more durable solution, but I wouldn't hate bringing him on if the price was right. No, I am not giving a man... No, I am not giving you a five-year fucking contract. Are you delusional? I will give you a three-year contract, and you better damn well believe it'll be two team options. This is literally the only way I will sign you, is if you take this deal. Because I ain't paying a guy to be that great into his 40s, especially one who gets injured frequently. Uh, Ty Sims. Ooh, that would cost me a draft pick. But he's a really good pitcher. Like, he's exactly the kind of pitcher that I would like to pursue. He's an Iron Man. He's got great movement, amazing control, pretty good stuff. No red flags in scouting. I frankly see no reason not to pursue him other than losing the draft pick. Other than losing the draft pick. So right now, how many rotation spots do I have I have none. 
But in reality, I'd love for Carrillo to get more experience in AAA. Um, Jared Tiet or Teet or whatever, I still think is better suited to be a reliever. So realistically, two starters would be probably quite welcome. I wouldn't hate Mike Serdinsky, but I also don't love Mike Serdinsky. Wait a minute, Jim General wants four million? I will bring him back for four million. Even even though he has been an injury prone mess, because like four million for a closer is highway robbery, and I'm here for it. Uh but where would I be picking in this draft? I'm picking 29th. Losing a first-round draft pick doesn't really bug me. Is there any starter in his 20s? Nope. Then I'm going to go for Ty Sims. Um... Let me do a five-year deal. And can I get a team option at the end here? Especially because I'm giving you a no-trade clause. That's the only reason why I'm being a little bit picky here. And for every season you throw 200 innings, I'm going to give you another million. No, he really doesn't want that team option. That's fine. I'll give him to give it to him as a player option. And then I would like one other pre decent starter, one who maybe needs like a second chance. But I can wait on that. Let's look at relievers now. I'd like to add a couple of inexpensive relievers to shore up the bullpen. Hi Alfred Lozano. You look like exactly the kind of gentleman that would be a fine fit for the Pittsburgh Pirates. And one more, maybe? I could bring back Josh Wiederholt. I don't know why I would, though. I might wait and see how these initial round of deals go before I make any other signings. Um, I know... He hasn't pitched that well, but for $4 million a year, I will happily take a chance that he will pitch that well, uh, that he will be healthy one of these seasons. I do want one more starter, though. If I can get, like, someone who doesn't want a ton of money, who maybe just wants, like, a chance to prove himself, I could, I could be into that. The thing is, a lot of these cheaper starters are cheap for a reason. Like, I guess there's value in trying Mike Serdinsky. But, I mean, he's basically Jim Gender if he was a starting pitcher. Like, for $9 million, he'd be a good value. I'm just not convinced that he is going to be a good value because I don't think he's going to stay healthy. Uh, and a lottery ticket for $4 million is different than one for 9 I could bring back Joe West if I wanted to. I do like Jimmy Denton. Uh, he's a possibility. He's also a git. LOL. But he's going to want like a five-year deal. And I ain't going to give a five-year deal to a 34-year-old. I almost nailed it. He actually wants a six-year deal. No. Uh-uh. Um, I'm not going to sacrifice our chances to be a good team deep into the future for your bullshit there. Let's see how these initial round of free agency offers goes. Yes, I do need to activate Valdivia. That is true. If I could have only one of those guys make my roster or sign a contract it would probably be sims if i could have two the second would be lara 
All right. First things first. Garrett Gunnels, put the man in the Hall of Fame, you cowards. Um, who else we got here? Um, I don't know about Ruben Brasenio. I'm not saying he's terrible because he's definitely not, but he only had, he has less than 3,000 innings, and that's kind of a bright line for me. If you want to make the Hall of Fame, I need to see at least 3,000 innings to be convinced that you were a good enough player for long enough. So I think I'm not going to vote for him, but if I had like an empty spot, I might come back. Steve Cribb is going to make it, no matter what happens, because he got 3,000 hits. Um... Bill Diaz, absolutely not. Tony Diaz, no thanks. Rodolfo Heredia, yes please, but I don't think he's going to make it. He might. He might. Um... Maybe 3,000 innings is just not realistic. Maybe I'm being unfair. Um, cause I'm seeing a lot of good pitchers that are just not making it. Um, you know what? I'll toss a vote to Ricky Peral. Why not? I don't think he's gonna make it, but... I will vote for Danny Perez. No, I won't. Yes, I will. No, I won't. I won't. He's no Ricky Peral, that's for sure. Actually, he's technically better than Ricky Peral. Fine. I'll vote for him, too. Trey Snyder. I'll vote for Jordan Tercios. Yeah, this is like a really, really weak Hall of Fame class, and yet somehow Gunnels won't get in. Uh, and that will just infuriate me further. I'll vote for Trey Snyder, it's just not going to matter. I think that's the problem, right? Is the AI won't vote for players whose primary contributions are defensive? I will vote for Dan Odom. I know he's short of 3,000 innings, but his track record is a bit better than some of these others. Um, oh, I missed Eddie Munoz. Interesting, he put up almost 80 war? Oh, he's a walk drawer, I respect that. You're in, my friend. I'll give vote for Mike Marion. And I will go up and I will vote for, um, who's his face, that starting pitcher I skipped, Ruben Brasenio. I'll give him some love. Vote in Gunnels, you cowards. <coughs> Although, let's be realistic here, it's going to be Crib and no one else. Uh, that's what's going to happen here. It's going to be Crib and no one else will make it. That's just how these things work. Uh, but it should be Gunnels. It should always be Gunnels. Gunnels should have been a unanimous Hall of Famer. I'm kidding. He was not a unanimous Hall of Famer. Uh, but I do think, genuinely speaking, he does deserve it. I will say, though, for the record... Oh, no. Not a third-round draft pick. Anyway. Uh, we got Lozano and we got Sims. Excellent. Those are both amazing additions to this roster. Let's add them both. Let's also fix the scouting so that we have the actual scout I trust, not fuckheads McGee in the OSA. You would offer me a bad picture. Like, I don't even care what you're asking for. This is a stupid deal. Like, unless he's, like, gigantic, no, he's, he's legitimately awful, so no thank you. I have no interest in your shenanigans. I 
I guess I don't need Shaq for a shortstop, but it's unlikely to find someone better than Clint Daly, and maybe the best course of action is just to go ahead and let that go for now and try to get a better shortstop next season or even bring Daly back. Because at least he's good defensively, right? And if we have to punt on one offensive spot in the roster, I'm comfortable with that. Okay, I love the name Moises Victory. There is no way in hell Nashville would part with him. Like, there is literally no way. Like, I know he's flawed. I know he's flawed. But let's at least ask. Really? You, you don't know which team he's on, game. Really? Yeah, I'm not going to get him. I'm not even going to waste my time. Fifty million. Have you lost your goddamn mind? No. What the hell is wrong with you? No. If Atlanta wants to pay you fifty million, fucking go for it. Wow. Talk about delusional. Holy shit. I'd rather bring back freaking Josh Lynch than that. Nah, we'll just ride Anthony Jones again. Fuck it. Like, I don't see anybody else here that is worthy of being added. I'm gonna guess there's Josh Lynch, but I feel like it wouldn't really help. I am... Wow. You are the most delusional player I've seen in a long, in a long time. Um, so I'm going to have a lot more money to spend. Is there anybody else intriguing that might be worth adding to the team? I could bring back Josh Weirholt on a one-year deal. I don't hate that idea. I'm just not convinced it's a great idea. Um, is there a good shortstop here? No. Not really. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't really see any other great free agents that I'm willing to back up a truck for. Like, Mike Iglesias is a fine hitter at a position I've got loads of people at. I could try Mike Serdinsky. His, con his price is coming down. I don't think anybody else wants him. So I think I'm going to wait even a bit longer before I go after him. I would like to add one more really good reliever if I could. Jonathan Dahlstrom is not that though. So let's let's look at the let's look at the bullpen now. Lozano is a very good ad. We might be getting gender back. I want one more reliever in the 50s to 60s. I think that's what I'm looking for. Ideally one I don't have to bat spend a ton of money on. TJ Crumb can't play center. No, he can't. Okay. Meh. Alright, let's go ahead and offer P. 
Pete McRoberts. No, even six million for him seems kind of high, though. Let's look at relievers. Like, I don't mind signing pickers that are fragile because they're bullpen guys, right? It's not that critical. I think three million for the possibility of a healthy Josh Wiederholt is somewhat useful. Oh, you're not getting a three-year deal, though. You're getting a one-year deal. That is all I trust you for. And then let's go ahead and... He's not a thrilling pitcher, but I think he'd be a nice back-of-the-bullpen type that could give us quite a few innings. Um, or we could just bring back Mike Turhar. But I'm not going to spend $6 million on him. I'd rather spend less money and get a slightly worse pitcher. Ooh, Alex Sanchez, I didn't even look at you. I think you would be a fine selection. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And if you want a three-year deal, I will give you a three-year deal. Uh, you seem to be a worthwhile pitcher. So we're going to go with that. All right, we get Jim Gender back in Pittsburgh. Wonderful news. Is this the year he finally gets healthy? Anything's possible. Anything is possible. I am extremely curious if anybody is dumb enough to give Lara the amount of money he's asking for. Uh, there ain't no way in hell that Colorado would give him, or Columbus would give him up. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go to my trade needs. I'm going to remove starting pitching because, to be quite honest, no one's going to give him to me. So we're just going to ignore that for right now. Um, I'll go up to 3.4 million. I think that's a reasonable price. Hell, I'll give you 3.7. I think my cutoff from is going to be 5 million. Uh, if he asks for anything near 5 million, I'm going to tell him no. Okay. Laura's going to come back to me. No one has signed him yet. I refuse to accept the fact that he's going to get paid $50 million. Maybe he will, though. Ooh, we got Alex Sanchez. Very nice. Uh, I'm going to put you on the active roster. You're just a prick, okay? I don't know what your problem is, but you're an asshole. I don't know if you just really hate Pittsburgh for some reason, but you're delusional. And I hope your legs fall off with Boston. Like, this is just weird, right? Like, I'm not being unreasonable, am I? Like, the idea that he would take less money just because it wouldn't give him $50 million. Like, no baseball player in history is worth $50 million a year. Not even Juan Soto. He's just not. Um... So yeah, I hope you your leg falls off in spring training, Lara. You're just a weird dude. Like, I don't know what your deal is, but I'm... It's whatever. Um... Who do we add to the 40? I can add three people to the 40 man to protect them. I don't care about a Gui. I, I don't care about a Gui. If someone else wants to go for him, they can. No, you know what? I'd rather trade him. 
Can Jeff Brandon play shortstop at all? He cannot. He is a terrible shortstop. So someone else can grab them if they want. Hmm. I'm just going to put you and Blanco on the 40, man. For now. I am really unhappy. I do not know what Lara's deal is. Why he's like, I can get a billion dollars from the Pirates. Um, but nobody else will pay me that much, so I'll just take less money to play on the East Coast, I guess. I don't know. I don't know what his deal is, but I do know that I don't like it. Ooh, way too error prone. Mm -mm. Let me use my filter. Let's see if I can get a good center fielder, perhaps. <sighs> like, you're an okay, like, fourth outfielder. But I've already got some fourth outfielders, right? Like, I've got Akamura, I've got Valdivia. Unless you're better than Anthony Jones, I don't really see a lot of value in grabbing a, a Rule 5 pick like that. I guess the benefit here is that he'd be a really, really good hitter someday. But he's error prone. And that makes him a terrible choice for center field, right? Just the worst. So I'm going to get rid of this. I'm just going to look at all players. See if there's anybody else here that's interesting. Victor Solano looks like a... Oh, actually, let me autograph till it's picked. These guys might be gone by the time I draft. Really? Tyler Pat. I guess he's a perfectly cromulent third baseman. Um, that's fine. So Solano is still around. Solano is still around. Look, let me be clear. My plan would be to stash him in the majors for one season, then send him to the minors. Because I don't... I've also got a really young outfield at left, right, and DH, and... Like, I don't see replacing any of them in the near future. But he's only 22, right? And, like, the downside of him is that I draft, is that I take him. He has a big year in the majors, like, if someone gets hurt. And then I've got an incredible trade shit. So I think I will grab him. Give me some Victor Solano, please. Draft player. Um, do I still have a shitty left fielder or a shitty left-handed reliever or do I have a good one now? I think I'd have a shitty one. I'm going to go ahead and also claim Ben Bullock. Oh, oh, my 40 man's full. I'll frickin' wave Dan Day, see if I don't. Yeah, I definitely want to give him a try. Look, I know Alvaro De Leon might be a better pitcher someday. Um, but he's also very far from the big leagues. Whereas, I feel pretty good about Ben Bullock. So I'm going to take him in the Rule 5, too. Yeah, I feel pretty good. Uh, I don't think I want anyone else in the Rule 5. Okay, let us sim forward. Man, what the fuck, Lara? That's all I can say to you. I, I don't know where the hell you get off. 
demanding billions and then being like, oh shit, nobody wants me. I'm not going to go back to Pittsburgh. Um, and maybe one of my, like, maybe one of my coaches, like, ran over his dog or something. I hope not to get John Wick after you. Or peed in his cornflakes or something, but... That is, like, the most random fact ever. I guess I'm kind of here for it, but... Uh, Dan Day will almost certainly not take a demotion. I'm probably just going to have to cut him. Which is totally fine. Uh, I will happily release him. Uh, pay it now. Once a preseason hits, um, I'm going to look at the free agent market one last time and see if there's anybody else worth taking. Uh, but then most likely what's going to end up happening is I'm going to increase my player development budgets. Guttel still can't make it, but he did go up. He did go up. So maybe there's still hope for him. Maybe. Ricky Peral got 16% of the vote. That's pretty crazy, actually. And we also got Josh Wiederholt. Excellent. See you later, Demaro Wells. You are yesterday's news now. We spent a decent bit of money to improve the bullpen, um, but I actually do quite like what we've added. Um, I'm sure no one else is going to take tomorrow, so we're going to demote him to the minors. What's your Ryan Brown end up signing for? He got $11 million to be a closer. You know what? More power to him. Um, you were a good egg. You were a good egg. How did Isaac White turn out? I remember being pretty impressed by your offensive talents for like that one season I had you, uh, but then I decided you just weren't worth it. I think we could fairly say I won that trade. I think, I mean, let's be honest here. I probably win most of the trades I make. Not all of them. Certainly not all of them. But I think most is fair. Or the team wouldn't be as good as it is. Because Lord knows we haven't gotten a whole lot out of the draft recently. We've gotten some. But I think like the last truly good draft pick we've got is maybe Sean Hill. I feel like Sean Hill is one of those guys who the game rated as a terrible reliever and we found him and made him an awesome hitter. Oh, Sorrentino. All right, preseason starts. Let's start spending some other money, too. Scouting budget. Give me the maximum. Done. Player development. Give me the maximum. I think the maximum is three times the league baseline. I think that's officially what it is. 36, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. I am not over budget. Am I? I am not over budget. The fuck are you talking about? Oh, I am over budget. No, I'm not. Yeah, I am. It looks like we're going to lose $30 million if I spend that much on player development. Alas, fine. I'm still over budget, 
So might as well just go way over budget, right? Yeah, let's fucking go. I don't even care, dude. You can cut my budget if you want to, or you can just increase it, so... Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and set a draft budget of zero, because I frankly don't need a draft budget. Because I'm gonna have free agent money that I can spend on the draft, so we'll go with that. I'm not wild about running it back with Anthony Jones at center field, and it still gives the same issue we had last year, which is that I don't have a true leadoff guy. Um, but I don't hate it either. Um, we might just need to maybe let Acuna be our leadoff guy, just so we can get Hill down farther in the lineup where he can do more damage with his power. Maybe that's the answer. I don't know. Oh shit, I never looked for a catcher, did I? I don't think there was anybody, but still, I did not look for a catcher. I'll check, though. I mean, there's always Josh Lynch. There is always Josh Lynch. Sign Josh Lynch to play catcher. Brilliant. Man, none of you are all that impressive. I'd rather just uh, maybe look in the trade market or just run it back with Herrera. Like, what I have is an, is an inexpensive cost control catcher who is at least better than league average with the glove. I don't see a downside to that. I don't see a reason to get antsy uh, at all for that. All right, how many people do I have in spring training? I have I have 60 slots. Uh, Christian Jackson. Sure. I'll give you some some minor league reps, some spring training reps, why not? Mr. Rebelar, you can have an opportunity. Robbie Rodriguez is going to go to high A this year. Like, I feel like I have to keep pushing him just to see if he can break through and be a truly outstanding player. Um, would you kindly stop that game? Stop resetting that to being my string training roster. I don't care. Anybody else I'd like to give an opportunity to? I mean, Mike Day could be a useful, like, third outfielder, fifth outfielder, however many is outfielder. Yeah, I'm good with this for right now. Jose, if you could play shortstop even a little bit, I'd probably give you some consideration for string training, but... The fact is I don't have a shortstop on this roster that is anywhere near Major League ready. Um, that's not true. I do have um, Mancia who could play shortstop and not be too embarrassing. Christian Jackson is also pretty good shortstop. Actually, you might have a bigger role on this team than I predicted in the near future. Like, with that ability to draw walks, you're going to be a better player than Clint Daly ever was off offensively. Uh, go ahead and set up all of the lineups. 
why is Sean Hill playing first base? Is he even good at first base? He is not. What? Why is Sean Hill getting reps at first? I'm not saying he can't do it. I'm saying why. I mean, I guess it just makes him a more valuable uh, player if he gets some reps, reps at another position, I guess. Uh, let's just let this go. Because it looks like there's lots and lots of turnover here with lots of different people getting lots of different opportunities. So I'm actually completely fine with it for certain training purposes. Well, sorry, I only did end up signing one starter, didn't I? I only ended up getting one. I got, um, Sims. That makes sense. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and roll out a six-man rotation. I just want to see who number six ends up being. It's probably going to be, oh, it's RL, RJ Padilla. Okay. Let us sim forward, my friends. Let us sim forward. I don't get Lara. I really don't get Lara. Can you just go like 10 minutes without getting injured, please? Just just 10 minutes, that's all I ask. I mean, you spend $4 million on a lottery ticket. You have to expend to lose, right? But it's only $4 million and I have plenty of money to spend. Get Jim Gender back. That is amazing news. Can you imagine Jackson at short and Rebelar at second? How good that would be? That'd be pretty good. All right, my friends, let us get, oh, let's actually finish doing our games. Here we go. All right, so who makes the opening day Pirates roster and does my front office stuff look it looks fine. Why are you saying it's only going to be half? I think you're just drunk, game. I think you're drunk. Which the market size to get like a tiny bit bigger. Imagine how much more damage you could do with a bigger market. Um, anyway. I got 43 players on this roster. 19 of them are pitchers. Let's start by calling some of the pitchers. Uh, see ya, Carrillo. Of the menu variety. Goodbye, Kearns. Goodbye, Lana. Goodbye, Moreno. Um, I have RJ Padilla to be my lefty killer. So maybe I don't actually need Mr. Ben, uh, Ben Bullock. 
Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and, and return him to the twins. You can have him back. All right, what does this give me, pitching-wise? I have 14 pitchers. I do not want 14. Um, I'm gonna try to sneak Chad Jensen through waivers. Um, if I can't, I can't, but I'm gonna try it. All right, pitching, we're gonna go five man rotation. Uh, gender is gonna be the closer. And Padilla is gonna be the lefty killer. Um, Andres Carrillo is going to be emergency starter along relief. That's going to be his role. And Alex Salgado is going to go back to middle relief. Yeah, as long as they're healthy, these are the guys I actually want pitching regularly. As long as they're healthy. Um, and if they're not healthy, then we will deal with that in the future okay i got a lot of position players something's got to give sean hill is legitimately a good first baseman this creates an interesting scenario for me i didn't anticipate really like, I didn't think Sean Hill would be, like, an amazing first baseman. Because he's not a very good outfielder. That was always his knock against him. So playing him at first opens up other possibilities for other players. Alright. I have too many good first basemen. I need... Is there a good outfielder left in the free agent market now? Battle Wars. There is not. Okay. I think Chris Barnhart is probably the most valuable asset I have at first. Like, I'm not kidding as many first baseman, right? It's not going to happen. Dan McFarland is a really good hitter, though. Damn. I have too many good first basemen. I have too many good first basemen now and not enough good outfielders. How bad would Salgado be if we put him in left? That'd open up DH. Like, realistically, how bad could you possibly be in left field? I'm going to figure it out. So Cerulean, right, Salgado and left. Center fielder in center field. Um, and then... I still think I trade Barnhart, though. I think Barnhart's value will never be this high again because he's not going to hit 290 regularly. And if he's not hitting 290, he's not that valuable to me. So I'm going to go ahead and offer you up for an intriguing prospect, if one could be acquired. Uh, hi, Melvin Castellanos. Nah. Nothing special. You're a good defender. You just don't do anything else well. 
I'm starting to realize I probably should have traded him in the offseason instead of trying to do it now. I get Brian Hammonds. I don't hate that offer. It's the best one so far. I thought your name was Oscar Bone, and I was all about that, but then I see your name is really Oscar Bourne, and I am sad. Uh, you know what? Let's check out center fielders just for funsies and see what might be acquired for us. Is anybody willing to offer me a 50-plus center fielder? Uh, Steve Davis is not a center field except in all of the most technical sense of the term. I don't hate Ruben Zepeda. I'm just not convinced that he's all that fantastic. Because the thing is, he's already at his, his maximum right now. Uh, it's not going to get any better than that for him. I want somebody with room to grow, basically. No... Nope. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Like, you're all okay players, but I don't see anything here that indicates you're better than Anthony Jones. And that's the issue, right? Like, I'm not going to trade for center field. It's not actually an upgrade. Instead, I'd rather just trade for the best player available. I see you, Juan Pierre. Definitely not Juan Pierre. Don't be trying to pull that shit. Pretend you're 29. I know who you are. I remember Juan Pierre very vividly. And having absolutely absolutely no value other than hitting for average and playing okay center field, yet people would always be convinced you'd have like all of the gold gloves. Really good defensively, you're a very useful player, but you're not a starting center fielder. That's a bold claim that he can play catcher. Uh, he clearly can't, but I like the positional flexibility he offers. Eh. I'm being underwhelmed. I would settle for being whelmed, but I'm not even being that. I'm being underwhelmed. Yeah. All right, let's go then with a prospect package. If I'm not gonna get... a great call, I'd rather get a big call. I'm gonna see if my GM likes any of these trades. What if I allowed you to add an additional player? Just for fun, I just want to see if I can get a really nice prospect package. Yeah, I'm going to do this, go back, and I'm just going to do this like this. And I'm just going to go through and find the best one. Edgar Gonzalez has a reasonable chance if he gets a big boost to be a pitcher someday. I mean, I guess he's a pitcher right now.
this is a very meh deal. I don't love it. I don't hate it. Meh. Maybe getting one fancy prospect is better than trying to get lots of mediocre prospects. Uh, so all players, just prospects, please. I'm just going to take the best prospect I can. Which I think is going to be that one reliever from... This reliever is like a 53, I want to say. Wasn't there? You've got a nice bat, my friend, but you're not a center fielder. At least not somebody I would trust in center field all the time. But I, I do like the cut of your jib. Why are you rated a 50? Like, you are thoroughly mediocre in every sense of the word, unless it's because they think you could be a starter, which I don't believe. Oh no, Sal is prego. Uh, we have fun. Uh, which Harper is a good second baseman. Like, I guess I could be selling low on Barnhart, but I need the roster spot. And there is no way he replicates this performance. I would bet a decent sum on that. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but I'm, I'm not wrong. I would be pretty surprised if I ended up being wrong. DJ Perea is at least a very good center fielder. I get that. Evan O'Neill is okay. Like, I know Danny Gray is a shit center fielder, but he's a pretty good hitter. And I think that is... If I could get Gallimore and Gray, I would call that a reasonably good deal. Because you're not going to go up, say, Matt Hawkins, right? Matt Hawkins is the one I probably would want more. What would it take for me to get Matt Hawkins off of you? Uh, Sure. I did not anticipate that, but yeah, Matt Hawkins offers us somebody who could be quite a good center fielder, given some time. And so I'm... Uh, are you any good, actually? You are not. Yeah, I'm just going to trade right now. I'm not going to hesitate on this. That gets you two prospects at an important position, and I'm giving up someone who I know is going to decline. That seems pretty good. All right, so I'm going to give Kanagyani a chance to play. No, I'm going to trade Kanagyani too. I can't let him play on this team. He's a no, no, he's different. The reason why I'd keep Kanagyani is because he's not just a home run hitter. He's also got very good plate discipline. As long as he's getting on base at a 340 to 350 clip and hitting some home runs, he's still very valuable to me. 
So I'm going to demote McFarland. It's going to be Kanagiani and Hill at first. Christian Jackson is really, really close to making this roster, but I am going to send him down to AAA this season, though. I want him basically to work on... By the way, Lon is a starter. Thanks for playing. Uh, Jackson needs to work just a little bit on his ability to hit for contact. But I could be definitely persuaded to start him at shortstop next season. Uh, I don't need Tyler Sanders. He offers nothing of value. Um, Rebelar, let's go ahead and just move you to second. Or I think he'll be a little bit more valuable than trying to make you stick it short. And then I'm going to send you to double A. We're going to let you play in double A again this season. Uh, Blanco to the minors. The day to the minors, cool to the minors. I could maybe see Dominguez making the roster. Let's see who else is left. Akamura, I think your time is done. Um, I think you're going to the minors. So it comes down to I still got to go to two more position players though, and they've both got to be outfielders. Agia, absolutely not. Uh, you're going to double it. So the question comes down, do I keep Valdivia or do I keep Dominguez? Well, Valdivia is a better corner outfielder, but Dominguez is actually a pretty fair hand in center too. So I think that makes this an easier decision than I thought it would be. I think Valdivia is the odd man out. So let us nuke everything, just nuke all of the things, and then we're gonna start from scratch and rebuild this lineup. All right, I want to do everything I possibly can to let Sean Hill bat anywhere other than lead off. Maybe Pozo leads off. Let's try it. Let's try Pozo leading off. Then I think we do Hill, Salgado, and Cerulli. Acuna bats sixth for right now. Um, no, he will actually bat fifth, and then Kanagiani will bat sixth. Uh, he's going to DH. And then I think we go Herrera, Jones, Daly. Yep, there we go. Um, Pat Link, you're going to back up at both catcher and first base because someone has to do it. Uh, I didn't say you're going to start. I said Herrera is going to start. So Link backs up at catcher. Um, I want you starting once a week at catcher. I think I do want you to get some reps every now and again just to see what you can do. Um, Mr. Victor Solano, you're going to be the backup for the corner outfield positions. And I'm going to put you first in line to get pinch hitting opportunities. Then Mr. Dominguez is going to back up at center and the other two outfield positions. And he's going to be my number two pinch hitter. Link pinch hits third. And, no, he doesn't. I said Link pinch hits third. 
And then we have Mancia. Um, backing up a designated hitter is probably going to be Solano, because I think Solano is the best hitter that's not getting regular playing time. And then Mencia backs up all of the infield positions. Now, I will say, I don't love the fact that we're having to put so much pressure on Mencia if one of my infielders can't play. I really wish that I had one more infielder rather than Solano. But Solano is an investment for the future, right? Solano is about getting another great player and seeing what he can manage. Um, if I'm worried about anything on this offense, is actually the defense because we've got two very aggressively not great outfielders. Thankfully, Anthony Jones is fantastic defensively, but he is not good offensively, so. Sean Hill playing first really intrigues me, and I'm really curious to see what he can accomplish at first base. Like, this dog will hunt anywhere I play him, right? Like, he's going to be amazing at first, or the outfield. He's a keeper. He is kind of the face of the franchise once Pozo retires. I'm really eager to see how Pozo can do in the leadoff role and if that lets someone like Sean Hill really tee off. I feel very good about one through five. I feel okay about six. If Kanagani starts to slip, um, I'm probably going to call it McFarland though, because I think McFarland is a better fit for this ballpark. Um, but yeah, maybe I'll put you on the trading block and just see what is offered to me for you. All right, my friends, um, so that is the lineup set. That's the pitching staff set. I feel reasonably good about our chance. No, I'm going to do one more thing. Andres Carrillo needs reps. Uh, Jared, you're my emergency starter, long reliever. The thing is, you're a known quantity, a very good quantity, but you're a known quantity. I don't know what Carrillo can do yet. I haven't given him, gotten even 150 innings out of him yet in a season. So I've got to just let him play. I've got to let him pitch and see what I've actually got so I can start making an informed decision about his future in the near future. Um... I, in retrospect, I wish I'd gotten one more good starter in the offseason, but we've really upgraded the bullpen. And I think Ty Sims genuinely can be a frontline starter for us. I genuinely believe that. Um, but this bullpen is significantly better than we rolled out last season. Um, it is relying a lot on pitchers with dodgy injury history. If we lose Gender and Wiederholt, this, really, this, this bullpen looks a lot worse. But I think Sanchez was a lovely find. Uh, Sanchez looks like a really good pitcher. Uh, and I'm pretty happy to see what we can get out of him. Um... Our, uh, RJ Padilla is still, I think, a possible starting pitcher, but I really like him as a, a mega bullpen guy right now. So that's definitely an option for us. Alfredo Lozano may be one of the best signings I've made in a long time. I wonder if I can lock him up right now. Done. extremely done uh he's just a really good reliever and i frankly don't know why anybody wouldn't want him he's not a closer but he's a very good reliever uh that sinker fastball is gonna play nicely here 
Um, any salaries we're gonna need to worry about here soon. Brown and Daly. Um, are probably the two players that we need to think about the most heavily. Daly, I don't mind losing. Um, while Daly's been very productive for us for a very long time, he's even been uh, an excellent shortstop. The fact is, I've got better players in the minors that I'd like to give a shot to a shortstop to. So, unless you want to come back for less money, and you're not, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to give you an extension. Jose Brown has been really, really good for us and has had very few injury problems. Last year was a rough year, though. But you want very little money to come back. But you're taking a pay cut. H how can I not take this deal? How? Done. See, this is loyalty, unlike Sergio fucking Lara, who two off-seasons in a row is like, I want $12 trillion from the Pirates and then signs for less somewhere else. You're a jerk. Those, I think, those deals there will age very, very well, in my opinion. Do we get any youngsters locked up? Not yet. It would either be Hill or Salgado, and I'd like to see how both of them do in one additional season before I make any drastic decisions there. Very good. I'm digging these guys willing to take pay cuts to stay with the Pirates. That makes me feel good. Unlike Josh, give me six and a half million. Fuck off with that right now. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. Just proceed kindly to fucking off. All right. That is going to conclude this episode. We're going to get a nice surprise beginning of next episode when we get a couple of nice deals. Um. Yeah, I'm not paying $7 million a year for Kanagiani. He's a terrible fit for this ballpark. I'm going to ride him as long as he's minimum, and then I'm going to trade him uh, for hopefully a pretty good deal. Until next time, my friends, this has been F Guardian. Thank you for watching, and I bid you good day.